So hello friends, uh, myself Dr. Pankaj Jain and uh, today I am here to discuss uh, roadmap for international pharmacists to practice in Canada. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So this is my first attempt for any YouTube video and I am a registered pharmacist here in Canada and I have done my graduation in pharmacy and PhD from India. So since I came here, this is one of the you know common question from all of my friends, uh, colleagues or the students that how to uh, be a registered pharmacist in Canada. So uh, let's uh, start uh, our today's uh, session and uh, I, I will be very brief. So this is this will be a series of uh, you know videos and uh, I will tell in detail about all these in later sessions. So let me first tell you about the Canadian pharmacy types. So in Canada, usual the pharmacy means a community pharmacy, and uh, in this discussion we will stick to mostly community pharmacy only. And the other pharmacy types are the hospital pharmacy, long-term care, specialty pharmacy, consultant, and the compounding compounding pharmacy. So for today's session, it will be the community pharmacy. And what are the various designations in a pharmacy, in a community pharmacy? The regulatory def, uh, designations are the manager, pharmacist and pharmacy technician. So manager is always a pharmacist, pharmacist may be the staff pharmacist, regular pharmacist and pharmacy technician. These are also regulated. So it means, uh, regulated means they have a license uh, from the college. Uh, to be a technician anyone cannot be a technician without a license pharmacy assistants these are not regulated means anyone with some experience be a pharmacy assistant and also I would like to tell that here college means usually in the you know uh, country like India it's the council the here the regulatory body is known as council and uh, uh, college sorry and it's a provincial body that's a state level body other staff includes the delivery person, administrative assistant, over-the-counter manager, etc. So these are as per the requirements of a particular pharmacy. Now, uh, going to the international pharmacy graduates. Who are considered as a international pharmacy graduates in Canada? So anyone who has done his uh, graduation uh, from uh, outside of US and Canada so they are considered as international pharmacy graduates and uh, they have to follow a process with PEBC so PEBC uh, is the pharmacy examining board of Canada now coming to the some national statistics that give you the idea of the pharmacy profession in Canada total licensed pharmacists are 45,600 Practicing out of these are somewhat less than 44,000 and total licensed pharmacy technicians are somewhat less than 10,000. Community pharmacies are somewhat less than 11,000. And if you see uh, the population of Canada is approximate 38 million and number of licensed practicing pharmacists are somewhat less than 44. So it's, uh, you know, there is one pharmacist around, say, uh, somewhat less than 900 people or 880 people so that's quite a good ratio for a pharmacist per 880 uh, uh, population and it's a quite well known and respected profession in Canada now uh, steps for the NAPRA so uh, NAPRA is uh, the first step that is the gateway to the pharmacist so you will uh, log on to the website napra.ca and uh, register yourself to the gateway to the pharmacists. Then uh, after this, the, all the steps belongs to the PEBC. So for the PEBC, first will be the document evaluation, then the evaluating exam, then MCQ exam, that is the qualifying exam part one, and part two, that is also known as OSCE. Then like, so these are the PEBC exams. And apart from this, the language proficiency is required from the international graduates. You have to do your internship, jurisprudence exam, that is from the you know uh, provincial college, or you can say the state level exam. And at last, you will get the license to practice as a pharmacist. Now let's dig into each step. So pharmacist gateway uh, that is on the NAPRA website. 
it is mandatory for everyone except for the Quebec and here a national ID will be given uh, to the candidate and fee for this step is uh, Canadian dollar 340 so and it at this step you can put any of the province you want to practice in Canada in the NAPRA website later on you can change it and uh, uh, every document uh, you have to uh, upload on the NAP, uh, this NAPRA website and as well as on the PBC website recently PBC has started the online portal so once you register with the portal everything will be shown up into the portal so the step one is the NAPRA that is gateway to the pharmacist and then you will move on after paying this fees of 340 you will move to the uh, PBC website at the PBC website the first step will be the document evaluation and fee for this is $675 and this requires a minimum of four year pharmacy degree or the PharmD degree and uh, document evaluation means PBC will evaluate that your degree is uh, equitable, uh, equitable with the Canadian uh, pharmacy programs and for the document evaluation you need to send the transcript good standing certificate uh, to the PEBC and this will be valid for five years so transcripts are the you know uh, documents given by the awarding institute so these are like uh, detailed mark cards in the India but these are sealed and stamped by the awarding institute that is the university and sent directly to the PEBC so you can contact your university how to get the transcript and good standing certificate is issued uh, from your uh, registering council for example you are in uh, uh, Delhi so Delhi state pharmacy council will issue the good standing certificate or any other state council in case you are not a licensed pharmacist in anywhere then you need to give a declaration that you are not a uh, pharmacist yet and uh, so this step will not be required for you now once the PBC will receive all your documents they will evaluate your file and uh, give you the PBC ID number and uh, this will make you eligible for the PBC evaluating exam so now coming to the evaluating exam so fee for this is $880 and it will evaluate biomedical science pharmaceutical science pharmacy practice and behavioral social and administrative sciences so this is kind of basic exam multiple choice exam uh, done only in one sitting now PBC has started started to conduct this evaluating exam in many countries including uh, India and uh, Pakistan and probably Bangladesh too and in many European countries so uh, pass percentage for the uh, PBC evaluating exam is I believe 60% so this is one of the basic exam and the first step for the examination part once you are done with the evaluating exam so now you comes at par with the Canadian graduates so uh, for each exam three attempts are given PBC may give the fourth attempt that will be the final attempt so and uh, English proficiency exam can be taken at any step or you can also give the French exam if you want to practice in the Quebec so for the English exam IELTS is usually acceptable exam and uh, there is one more exam CELPIP that is also accepted and uh, those are usually valid for two years so now coming to the qualifying exam once you have passed your uh, evaluating exam you are supposed to write the qualifying exam so this consists of two parts part one and part two so either you can write both exams in one sitting or you can write them separately so it's up to you so these exams are considered very hard so MCQ that is the multiple choice question is the second step and this assess the candidates competence so uh, this is a kind of you know exam which challenge your knowledge in the pharmacy practice and fee for exam is the $815 and uh, then comes to the uh, OSCE exam and OSCE uh, this is a practical exam here you know uh, the 
scenes are created and the candidate is supposed to do what he will do in his real day practice like a patient comes how he will act a doctor come for the query how he will act and uh, this uh, pbc exam uh, this oski exam will cost uh, 1835 dollar and both these exams must be passed within the 3 years of each other so some students prefer uh, to do the mcq first and then they do the oski later some can do the at the same time so it's up to your individual competency how you want to do that so once you have done with your oski exam so now you are done with all three exams of the pbc and uh, you will be issued the pbc certificate so uh, there is a little bit more detail about the oski uh, exam so oski exam has the stations so these are usually 13 in number and uh, these are the various scenario on which the examining body test you since uh, uh, 2017 they have started that uh, for as both of the qualifying exams there are the three attempts so in case someone uh, tries the mcq first and uh, unluckily didn't make it then he cannot do the oski exam if the candidate candidate is doing both exams together for the first time it's good to go otherwise candidate now is required to pass mcq first before going to the oski number of attempts uh, i have already uh, told that these are the three and uh, meanwhile uh, after doing all your exams so you will be doing the provincial licensing part as well so it means the english exam and the internship in which state you want to do and uh, license will be awarded only after the internship and uh, as you have seen every exam and the document evaluation includes a lot of money so that's a couple of thousand dollars and uh, a time period too usually at least one and a half year to two and a half years are required to complete all the process uh, and what you will get after doing all this stuff so the every student also ask uh, how much they will get how much is the salary so that uh, depends a lot upon the area and your competency too so the usual um, i can say with my experience salary for a pharmacist is between say 40 to 55 dollars per hour depending upon your location most of the times it's uh, for the fresh pharmacist is the 40 to 45 dollars some of the graduates are getting lower side also say 37 8 dollar per hour but that's not a uh, you know bad salary here in canada and uh, moreover you will uh, you feel that you are in a very good profession you will be very very proud what you will be doing and it's a very respectable profession so this was all the brief how you should approach so the first step is the uh, NAPRA registration then the PBC website registration then document evaluation and three exams evaluating MCQ and OSCE and parallelly you have to do the provincial part that is the uh, English language requirement and your jurisprudence exam and internship so internship is uh, usually 500 hours and uh, some of the province re uh, is required to do the bridging program like the ontario or the uh, bc and nowadays alberta too so uh, we will discuss in detail about this part in some other time okay friends uh, thanks and you have if you feel do you have any question just let me know i will able to i will try to help you out Thank you and there is one important thing for the immigration purpose uh, though i will uh, take care of that part in some other video uh, the pharmacy degree is considered as a master's part if you get your qualification assessed from the pbc so those who are applying directly for the immigration make sure they do their assessment for the pharmacy degree from pbc and they will awarded uh, marks for the master's program i believe that's uh, enough for the first video Thank you.